I'm very excited. I've just received the 104th edition, which at the time of the filming of this video is the most recent edition of the Handbook of Chemistry and Physics. This doesn't actually mean that I'm all caught up though, because if you look over here, you can see I have yet to get a 103rd edition. And also if you look carefully, it goes 23 and then 25. I'm missing a 24th edition. And then on top of that, I'm missing the first edition, the second edition, the third edition, and the fourth edition. Of course, at the top you see a facsimile of the first edition, which was given out with the 85th, but I don't have an original first. So while I'm nearly caught up and I have the most recent edition, I've still got a little ways to go despite that. Anyway, let's get this in the stacks. So in the last clip, you saw me put the 104th edition in the stacks, which left me with only one available edition not yet obtained, and that is the 103rd edition, which has shown up recently. So it's time to add that to the stacks now. At that point, I'll only be missing the 24th, and then the 1st through the 4th in original form, and only the 2nd through the 4th if you count the facsimile of the 1st edition that I have that was printed by CRC and handed out with the 85th edition. So at this point, there aren't any other available editions that I can find. I don't know why the 24th is so hard to get. The 1st through the 4th is a bit easier to see why it would be hard to get. There is apparently a 3rd edition available on one website, but it's so expensive, I don't know if I consider that available or if I'll ever buy it. So for now anyway, I have every available edition with only 4 missing. And that'll conclude my collecting for now, at least unless I find a 24th or a really early edition randomly shows up somewhere like eBay and I'll start a video that I've been wanting to make for a while where I review the changes in the periodic table that have occurred over the last hundred years by going through this entire series of books. Anyway, let's get this in the stacks. And I suppose that's it then, for now anyway. It's not going to be so convenient going forward now if I aim to get a complete collection. Regardless, it's very satisfying to see a, at least as of current, complete set of hundreds sitting on top of a complete set of nineties. So I've been thinking about it a little bit over the last few days, and I think I want to shorten this stack. As much as I like seeing all the nineties underneath all of the hundreds, I do think that it's probably advisable not to have that book stack be so tall, partly because of the weight on the lowest books. Then over here, I kind of want to see some of the books behind the earliest stack, which would require me to move the 20s that are under there back onto that, providing yet another reason to shorten this stack. And I also think it'll look nice to have this stack at least get closer to being tall enough to actually be visible from my bed. So I'm going to handle that rearrangement now.
Okay, there we go. I think that's more reasonable. It's much more consistent with how I usually have things. It's much more consistent with what I've tried enough to trust. Now, that book stack behind there, you may wonder why I'm willing to have it be that tall if I didn't want the front one to be that tall, at least with full width books. And the answer is it's not solid chemistry and physics handbooks all the way down. As you may have seen in the various restackings that I've done, there are some much more robust and also less essential books down there. And that's about it. I'm in good shape.